Maybe not that. I know. Maybe the kittens are. Kittens are. It's the kittens' fault. It's the kittens' fault. It's the kittens fault. <laughs> Hi everybody. We are making caramel fun today, and we have. Uh, this is a dessert that is really good for Mexican meals. It is also really good if you have kind of a complicated uh, dinner, you know, entree, and you want to have time to not think about dessert. And just, this is a dessert you make the morning of or the day before, and it all, and you know it's going to be good. No matter what, it's going to be good. And um, you just have to unmold it and put it on a plate. I'll be doing that with some that I've made tomorrow. Um, yesterday, not tomorrow. <laughs> okay. The most complicated part of this is making the caramel. So I've already turned on my oven. It's at three, three twenty between three twenty-five and three fifty. Um, caramel sounds really complicated and horrible, but it's really easy if you do what I tell you to. Do what I tell you to, okay? So, you need one cup of sugar. Now, this is totally, if you want more, you can do more. I made, I made 10 individual ones with one cup of sugar. Now, put in uh, maybe three tablespoons of water into this. And then we're going to swirl it around. We are not going to stir this with a spoon at all, not even a little. I'm gonna put this on and then I'm going to put this up here so that you can see what I'm doing. All that I'm doing is swirling. What? What? Um. It's on medium. Oh dear. Is it? Are you frozen? I'm. I don't think so. No. Okay. Good. No. So it's it's on medium, Kate. It's around medium. Okay. It's not super high, not super low, and you're just swirling it around like this. And you're putting it on there and you're bringing it to a boil. Don't mess with this. Um, don't, don't, you don't have to stir it. You don't put anything on it. Um, sugar is really nasty as far as getting it because it'll crystallize. But by the time you get caramel stage, even if it's crystallized, it will be fine. So you can see it's already beginning to bubble up. Now this is going to go, this is part of the candy making process. There's, um, and I've never been a real fan of making candy, but it mainly because it's very precise. But this is going to go through several stages of candy. Um, the, the string stage, the softball stage, the hardball stage. These are all stages that candy makers know, and I don't. Because, like I said, it's pretty persnickety. And, and I've never been a fan of persnickety. So... And you can see it's change. It's going through its own chemical thing. You're watching. Dina's here watching. 
Hi, Dana. Hello. I've done it before, but I've burned it. Oh, well, you can't walk away from this. This is not something you want to walk away from at all. You want to stand here and say, oh, delightful, you know? Um, mainly because you never know how, whether it's going to, how, how far it's going to go, how quickly. Uh, it's like I said, it's dead simple, but you don't want it to burn. And I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Already see that the bubbles are different. The texture of it is different. It is, it will burn the hell out of you. You don't want to do that. You, you're just basically leaving it there. You're just leaving it there. It's fine. Um, and it doesn't take very long. And in order to know where the, it is, I'm swirling it. Um, it doesn't take very long. It's probably right now looking at those bubbles. It's probably at the softball stage. Um, it, the temp, it's all about temperature. wrong and crystallizing sugar so I don't usually do it but you're just standing here staring sullenly into space and keeping track Kate why is it you don't stir it uh, crystals stirring into it other than makes your spoon all goopy yeah that That's is it right. Yeah, you know, and there's nothing to it. Um, if I were making this and I really wanted it super special, I would um, put water around the edge so that it would go down, you know, so that it wouldn't form these crystals. See those crystals on the side? But it's, it's not gonna matter at all. Like I said, this is the tricky part. This is the only tricky part. And you're already smelling it as something di different. You can actually smell it when it starts. Oh, it's about ready to caramelize. It's about ready to, to turn brown. Now, if you were making candy, this would all matter. Everything that I've just told you would matter. This matters not. It does not it matter. matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter because you're not burning it. You're not doing anything. You're watching it, which is boring as hell. <laughs> but can see it's harder to see on the it's harder to see on the screen now it's beginning to brown so i'm going to swirl it around like a real light amber color amber color very light very light. now look can you see it now a little. Okay. It's getting really golden, close to honey color, a light honey color. Now, don't walk away from this ever. Okay, now you can smell the caramel. You can smell it. And you need to realize that this will continue to cook because the pan is hot. It will continue to cook, so you don't want to leave it until it's really dark. You want it now. That's it. That's the carnival smell. That's the carnival smell, as Dina says. Okay, and we're going to pour it into all together into the pan like that. 
and we're going to swirl around like that. And that's it for the caramel. Okay. So I, you know, again, I have a black pan, so I can't see the color as well. It looks kind of honey colored to me. So it doesn't seem very dark, but yours doesn't look super dark either. No, you don't have to make it dark. It can be slightly darker than that, but you don't have to. Okay. It's all, it's all good. I'm all right. turning that off. I'm getting the pan. I'm just leaving the pan. Don't do anything with this pan yet. <laughs> Actually, what I'm going to do with it is open up a can of evaporated milk and pour it carefully into this pan. The pan is still hot. Your, your, the, the whole point of this is not to make this hot. It is to make it, see if that, that milk can incorporate some of that caramel off the bottom. That's it. it I, I used to soak that pan and it had all of this caramel in it that was left over. And I thought, what if I just put milk in there? Why not? or at least some of the milk in there. Why not? And, and it gives a nice caramel flavor to the, to the flan. So why not? Okay, now we're going to do the really tough stuff, which is to put the eggs in, you know, the egg mixture, which is, Oh, I need to turn on, turn on the hot water. It's important to have hot water going right now. So here we go. There's six eggs. Room temperature is good. So I don't know. I've made it with cold eggs too. I don't see much difference, so. If it's not room temperature, go ahead and do it anyway. Who cares? And so it's six eggs. Okay. And I'm going to whip up half a cup of sugar. Uh, a good pinch of salt. You want this really well mixed. You want it well mixed, but you don't want it frothy, you know, like with volume. And it looks pretty, looks pretty good here. Then you see, then you start putting in the milk. And in this case, okay. I love this recipe simply because I always have evaporated milk on the shelf. I always have sweetened condensed milk on the shelf. I almost always have eggs. With all of that, there's no... You've got it. It's done. Did somebody say something? Yeah, me. Um, I end up sometimes with bubbles in my custard. Does that mean I'm mixing it too much? Yeah. It's all about mixing it thoroughly, but not mixing it so that there are bubbles in it. That's And honestly, if there are a few bubbles, it's usually okay. <laughs> you know, it's hardly the big time. Now I added some vanilla and almond extract because I can. The, the 
the spices, I'm sorry, the flavorings can be anything you want. And how much of those, I mean, eight, how much, so it doesn't mess up the liquid proportion? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't mess up the liquid. It won't? Okay. Cheese. There's no, there's no, no messing up. Okay. If you okay. want to, if you only have five eggs, you could use five eggs. If you okay. wanted to more, you could use seven eggs. Who cares? If uh, this teaspoon or teaspoon and a half is going to be nothing as far as making it wrong or anything. Okay. It's okay. Uh, I put brandy in here. I put liqueur. Uh, I combine things. I put orange extract in here and orange peel. There's all kinds of things. Anything oh. wrong. You can put anything you want in there. I happen to like um, vanilla and um, almond. That's what I happen to like. But you can add anything that you want. Um, a can of sweetened condensed milk. And I'm probably going to need something to scrape it out with. Oh, good. So much for that. And then I'm swirling this around. This is just what's left over. And you'll notice that a lot of the, the caramel on the bottom has dissolved and gone into the milk. All to the good. So it's a matter of just mixing it up. Now, you do not have to do this. I usually do it just because I'm weird. But I pour it in using a strainer. Which makes it even smoother. And I think the strainer, Bonnie, what might help your might help your your um, problem with with whole with bubbles in it too. And there we are. All right. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is put this in the oven. I put it in the oven and then pour the water in and slowly, because I don't like boiling water. Um, let me show you how this works. Pull it out a little bit. Put this in and then pour the water in around it. That way I don't have to lug all of this liquid around, which would then splash all over me. Oh, hello. I need to put a little bit of foil on top. I put a lid or you could put a lid okay lid 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 is great you're creating a bon marie and then
You cook it for, you bake it for um, that one. I would probably put in there for at least 55 minutes and then I check it. Um, it's big. The ones that I made yesterday, I'm going to show you them in a second. Uh, the ones I made yesterday were in there for, yeah, they were in for 45 minutes and then, or no, 55 minutes. I'm going to put this in for 55 minutes, check it. I probably won't be done. It'll probably be about an hour and 10 minutes. And care, it'll all depend, Carrie. Yeah. It'll all depend on how thick yours is. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you the finished product. Now I made these babies, and they are babies yesterday and this is what they look like so what i'm going to do is unmold one and show you what they look like when you're unmolding a big one you have to have a certain dexterity you know like flipping it really fast and things little ones not so much so you run your a knife around the outside like that. Put it in the middle. Flip it. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> oh, good. It doesn't work. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> there it is. Nice. And you have, you can have this with berries around it. You can garnish it with a, um, with a, uh, a mint leaf. You can leave it plain. It's absolutely delicious. And it's caramel flan. So, um, Carrie, you've had a, a larger flan at my house, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep, several, times. several times. I like the larger flan when I don't know how many people are coming for dinner. Because you can cut it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's another person here. I don't have to panic or anything like that. I can just, you know, cut it smaller or whatever. Um, this is also good with with uh, whipped cream on top. Um, but the thing that I like about it is almost everybody likes it. And it's done ahead of time. It's way ahead of time. So there you have it. That's, that's caramel flan. And it's super easy and super good. And I hope you try it. <laughs> Any questions? So mine turned out to be um, really thick. It actually filled the whole dish. So it's just going to be in there okay. for a while. Yeah, you've covered it. Yep. It's in, you put water around it. Yep. How do you determine when it's done? How do you determine when it's done, Dina is saying. Yes, you, you do need to have a knife. <laughs> you with one that's it's just going to yeah i did this i did this anyway okay um you stick your knife in into the middle it's still jiggly but you stick your knife in and it comes out clean it's done it's done and realize that this is also going to cook beyond the time you know as it's sitting there, it's got, you're going to remove it, put it on, uh, remove it from the water. It's going to continue to cook. So it'll all be, it'll all be great. 
So there you have it. All right. Yay. Yay. Uh, so, what, should, what should we cook next week, Kate? How about making some big old fat meatballs in spaghetti sauce? I'm down. That sounds I'm great. I'm down. Totally down. Is that okay? Ah. Meatballs and spaghetti. Perfect. I've got meatballs. Remember those meatballs that I made, Carrie, that were like big? Yeah. And they were really fluffy and wonderful. So I'm going to show you how to make meatballs in um, homemade spaghetti sauce, if that's okay with you. Perfect. I haven't made that kind of food in a while. So. Well, as soon as we can figure out virtual eating, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, this week, Barry, you need to come over this okay. week. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Bonnie. Bye, Bye ladies. Bye, 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 everybody. Thank you. You Take tell care. me when. Let me know when. Bye. We'll do. Bye.